gonna show you how to operate, at least on 1025, the rear PTO when you're off the operator seat. Folks, how we doing? Welcome to Good Work Tractors. Today, we're gonna talk about the Ag Spray three-point mounted PTO driven sprayer for your tractor. Now, my unit here is about three years old, so it's not gonna look brand new, but that does speak to the longevity of it, right? It's actually been sitting outside for going on three years now, and it looks pretty darn good overall. Powder coated frame on here, polyethylene hopper too, so uh, corrosion resistant there as well. Now I have replaced uh, the boom down here, so I did have a boomless nozzle on here to begin with, and I switched over last year to the seven nozzle boom, so these can swing out, I'll show you here. And there's advantages and disadvantages to each. I do like the more, hmm, I don't know, consistent coverage, I guess I'd say, uh, with the boom on here versus the boomless. I felt like it wasn't, you know, you, you dry run this kind of stuff. If you wanna, if you're not sure the kind of coverage you get, do it on your driveway with just water and get a pattern and see what that pattern looks like, see how consistent it is. And you can change the nozzles up and everything else. But I felt like, the version with the booms is a little bit more consistent for what I'm looking for on the coverage. Now it's not gonna be as wide of coverage as you can get with the boomless because those can shoot out I think as far as 30 foot, maybe more than that depending on the setup that you have going on. But for me, if I'm, if I'm doing my yard, I did my yard this weekend and I had this on here, it was very easy to kind of see the tracks where I was driving and kind of estimate my pathways there versus if you're, if you're doing your lawn like a weed and feed, uh, this product here I got from Tractor Supply, Boy, 30 foot or so is a really hard guessing game from the tractor operator seat unless you really know your layout, which I don't. But on that note, this stuff right here is what I got. And you know, it's just the general stuff from Tractor Supply. Weed and feed, 1500, okay? So compare this, I paid 65 bucks, it took two gallons. I got about two acres that I was using Don, so about 130 bucks there. Plus of course, you know, you've got uh, operating expense here, fuel, you had to pay for the sprayer, had to pay for the tractor, that kind of thing. But 130 bucks for me to do it, and it took about an hour's worth of time compared to the quote that I got recently, which was $390 to have that same job done. And so of course they had to pay labor, they have to pay for their own equipment, travel time out here, trucks, trailers, the chemicals, all that kind of stuff too. But if you already have a tractor, right, that can be used for all sorts of different projects, then you're investing in a sprayer. And for me, not only did I spray the yard this weekend, but I also sprayed for the third time, fertilized the garden, and I'm getting ready to round up that grassy field there. So I think, I think I'm gonna mow first and then I'm gonna round up, and you'll hear some guys say to, to round it up and then wait and then mow and then round up again, but I'm just gonna mow and then I'm gonna round up shortly after that, and then I'm gonna work it all up and plant my, my seed for the fall plot. And of course, we have a little bit of fence line around here as well to spray, kill the weeds underneath there, different areas in the landscaping that I don't want anything to grow in, so all sorts of spraying needs that can be done there too. And, and so for me, it's multi-purpose. I have a lot of things that I can use this sprayer for. I've got gravel areas around the building. I had the perimeter of the barn that I want to spray and keep those weeds at bay. So I have a lot of different potential uses for this sprayer. I'm probably going to use it more in the next month or two than I have the last two plus years combined. Let me show you a few more features about this sprayer as well. And keep in mind that we're a dealer for Ag Spray and we sell and ship. You can buy right on our website and we ship it right to you as well. So a few other things to note, you're going to see this red chunk of steel. That's not part of the sprayer. That's a quick hitch. So whether you have the Spico or something else, it's going to be category one quick hitch compatible. The Spico here doesn't use bushings. All right. So you save a lot of money by not having to have bushings if you get one of these, but it'll work with any of them, or you can hook it up directly to your three point hitch. Now there's a lot of ways to configure these sprayers, but we carry just a, a couple of versions because I think it makes the most sense and, and it also minimizes our inventory. So we carry the most popular configurations, which are all going to include a wand right here. All right, so you're gonna have 25 foot of hose. You can get 50 foot of hose extra if you want to. Um, the 55 gallon, again, boom or boomless, either way there. The 1025 will pick this up when it's full of water. 55 gallons in here, okay, full of water and, and your, uh, your herbicide or your fertilizer or whatever you wanna put in there. But it's gonna lift that all the way up, really good to know. And this is PTO driven with a roller pump, all right? So it's very easy to hook up. Sometimes you will find that you need to prime that pump. And so essentially you're just gonna unscrew um, the, the inlet side on there and let it drain out. This is kind of gravity fed. So you can put your, your inlet hose on the ground and let that pressure just kind of put it through, prime it up, and then just put that right back on the pump, tighten it down with the screw, 
and you're in operation. Now here you can see your control area, all right? So you can set uh, your pressure right here. Here's your 100 uh, PSI pressure gauge, and then this is gonna turn flow on and off. You can control flow going through uh, the boom or through the spray gun as well. And this is able to be reached from the operator station, all right? So just right here with the flip of a switch, flip of a handle, I should say, as easy to do as that. A couple other features worth mentioning, you can see it's actually sitting on the ground right now, but a really nice built-in stand. So this is just self-standing, doesn't fall over, tip over at all. Very easy, very convenient to back up to. And then these arms are spring-loaded breakaway. So if you're driving that way, you know, and you hit a tree or, a, you know, even a pine tree, something like that, I, I had this happen several times. So they'll give just like that. It is kind of annoying to come off and, and swing it back this way, but uh, it's also very nice to not break off the arm on your, on your sprayer either. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to load this thing up with about halfway full of water. We're going to use this glide uh, sometime soon. I'll probably do just a, a small strip on, on what we mowed already with that big old finish mower. Um, I don't have a, a mask out here at the moment, so I don't want to have the, the stuff spray all over me, but if we go a certain direction, the wind's blowing the other way, so we'll be okay. So first we're going to load this up and I'll show you the spray test on the concrete so you can see how consistent of a pattern it is across the entire boom. All right, so we're gonna do our spray test here. You wanna start the PTO at idle. And then you're gonna rev it up after that and then you'll, you can open your gate, or your valve, I should say. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a ballast weight solution for your tractor. You know I'm all about safety and this is just a perfect match. Liquid ballast is one of the most cost effective solutions. In fact, there's liquid ballast on this tractor right now, right inside these rear tires. So it's hidden, it's out of the way, it gives you that extra stability you need when you're using the front end loader. It gives you safety to keep those rear wheels planted on the ground and it gives you traction when you need it. Well, why RimGuard? It is a natural product that is gonna be safe around animals and livestock in case you get a puncture and it leaks out. That means it's also gonna be safe on your wheels as well. You know the old calcium chloride that'll rust those things out and ruin them. It is also the heaviest natural ballast weight on the market today and the most convenient, which is available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. So head on over to rimguardsolutions.com to find a dealer near you. All right, so we're gonna fill this bad boy up. And I've got a little bit of uh residue from the weed and feed left in there right now. I'm not too worried about that. So I went from, well, what's the right way to say this? I guess I went from just a straight fertilizer on the garden and then into a weed and feed. And then I'm going into just a straight roundup, basically the gly that I'm gonna apply. And so I don't care if there's a little bit of fertilizer that's left in here. It's gonna have the weed killer in here, plus the gly to kill the field that I want and anything around the building, that kind of thing too. So if I did reverse, you'd want to completely clean this out in between. If I did the gly, you know, and then went to the yard, I want to make sure I, I rinse this out with water, run it through, cycle it through all the nozzles and everything else, really get it nice and clean. So doing it this way, I don't have to worry about that so much. I'm going to have to do, the, do that process, that cleaning process, when I go back to do the yard next, or when I go back to fertilize the garden, to make sure I don't kill everything off with any residue that's left over in here now from the, from the glyphosate or, or Roundup. But as far as trying to just time everything right and get the right quantities and the right speed, you know, this tractor doesn't tell you speeds. And so you can do some tests. You can, and it'll tell you in manuals, whether it's for a spreader or a sprayer, that kind of thing too. You can do a test where you drive along maybe a hundred feet or a hundred yards or whatever. I think it's a hundred feet typically and see how long it takes you to cover that, that distance. Say you're at full throttle and low range, and it doesn't tell you how fast you're going on your tractor. Just time how long it takes to cover 100 feet, and then multiply your coverage you know, by the length covered, and then you can do some acreage calculations that way and determine how long it's gonna take you, at what speed, you know, the amount of, of product you need to apply and everything else. So for me, I honestly, I don't get that scientific with it. I, I know I've got approximately two acres in my yard, for example, and that requires two jugs of the weed and feed. And so I just kind of eyeball it, right? And 
I get close. <laughs> a little bit of it's winging it, I suppose, but, it, but it's pretty darn close. So I ended up with very little left over, um, very few second passes. There's a couple areas I think I got a little extra coverage on there. With the garden, that's basically 100 foot by 50 foot. I think it's actually like 105 foot or something, but right around 5,000 square foot there. The whole thing is not plants, but I'm not doing a direct spray. I could do that and save uh, product right now, but um, for now I was just spraying. We did have more vegetables in there, but the sunflowers got eaten. Uh, the corn's been getting decimated too, but the pumpkins and watermelon are doing good and so are the tomatoes. So anyway, I just used basically half of a, a jug of the fertilizer you know, the 10, 10, 10, triple 10 on there, and it worked really well, kind of a starter, and then I'm gonna apply that one more time as well, as I think a total of four applications, really get those things jump started. So experiment with it a little bit. It's always good to have a little extra on hand anyway, and if you buy it in the bigger jugs uh, from your stores then, or if you get concentrates, you know, a little will go a long ways, and, and you can always add more later on if you need to. But lots of good information in the instructions as well, if you really wanna get it dialed in right down and do all your planning ahead of time. Alrighty folks, so there you go. A little overview of what you can do with this. And again, I'm not doing much. I'm just doing it with the wind, just to give you an example there. I, I do wanna wear um, a face mask when I'm doing most of the spraying here. I'm just using the wind in a couple spots. But you're able to see how it works. You know, we mowed a, a strip there in the plot already. So I did that. Um, so you can see how that works. You know, did it off the tractor. I'm gonna show you how to operate, at least on a 1025, the rear PTO when you're off the operator seat. Um, and then showed you going along a fence line, just holding that spray gun and kind of going along too. That's a really effective way as well to get things done. So there's a lot of different ways to use it, I guess, is what I was trying to highlight. Um, and again, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward on how to do it. I think the biggest challenge most folks have with sprayers is gonna be they won't spray. And so that's gonna be a priming issue. And so typically, again, just disconnect the line, the infeed, where that flow is gonna go through on, on the bottom of your tank just disconnect that late on the ground, let gravity do its thing. It'll let that fluid go through there so that it's gonna help prime it. And then once the fluid is coming through, you can attach it right back to the pump here and that's gonna prime it. And then you can turn it on, turn it on at low RPMs like you see us doing here and then rev it up after that. So really quick, it's super easy to do. You just have to do the right sequence of events to operate this rear PTO. So you're not sitting on the operator seat. You're gonna turn your tractor to the neutral range. All right, so not high or low, but right neutral. Make sure your parking brake is on. Mine is not on. So actually I gotta turn that on still. So put that on right there. So your neutral parking brake is on, low idle, P 
PTO is off, all right? So turn the tractor on, and then push this PTO button on the whole way, not just the on, but like the detent position, like way in there. And you're operating, and then you can throttle up, and you're good to go. But if I get back on the seat and hop back off, it's gonna kill the engine. So it's still gonna have that safety. So if you do get on the operator seat and hop back off, you're gonna to have to repeat that whole process, which is not a big deal, just something worth noting. So that's gonna wrap it up for us today. Again, 55 gallon tank sprayer, PTO driven, three point cat one, quick hitch compatible if you want it to be. You can get these at goodworkstractors.com. We do sell and ship all over the country, so give us a shot. If you do enjoy tractor related videos, whether it's product overviews for new products that we carry, doing project work, tractor business stuff, all kinds of things completely free. If you hit that subscribe button down below, you can be notified of when we have new videos coming out. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.